we got camera one, we got camera two. I'm going to look at that one. That's going to be the one that most people watch. I might look at both of them. I don't know. Uh, well, we got this one, too. Do we want to move it over that way? So that no, no, there's not enough, not enough cord. It's all about these cord limitations. We could, we could plug it into the same charger. Yeah, that's okay. This one's fine. Let's plug it into the same charger. Come on. This is going to be better. God. Pull, pull that. Pull that. Uh, that one. That's your cable, I assume? No, it's yours. Oh, where'd you find that from one? From the front door. Oh, okay. Gotta make sure to give that back to Mama. Remove the screen. Actually, that's not that's that's that's, 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 that's kind. Let's go wide angle. Wide angle. Hello and welcome, Handgun Radio. <laughs> I'm not used to this video stuff. Oh man, empty glasses. Welcome. Hey, Matthew says hello. How you doing, Matthew? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't I fix this? We're professionals here. Here at Hangar Radio. Oh, I've got my my Patriot patch shirt. Oh, there we go. That's a little bit. I w I wore this on purpose. <laughs> Did you wear the Smith Lesson shirt on purpose? Of course I did. Or is that like your only shirt? It seems like every time I see a picture No, it's you... the Glock shirt. Tomorrow will be the Glock shirt. Okay. So we're going to wear the Glock shirt in Boston. Okay. Yeah. Well, the Boston police carry Glocks, and, and they're not legal to buy in Massachusetts. Yeah. I think that's one of our questions. All right. So, are we ready? Uh, we're doing this. We're doing it. Okay, we're going to do an extended drink segment, too. Okay. So. All right. Hello and welcome to Handgun Radio. I'm your host, Ryan Machat from the wild woods of central Maine, and this is your show for all the news, information, and discussion in the handgunning world. This week we're doing a live Q&A on location with Mr. Weird Beard. Hi, this there is my house. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're going to do a live drink segment. It's going to be a little bit more uh, free-flowing than usual. And... Uh, as always, shop Amazon using our affiliate link, firearmsradio.tv slash amazon.com. And uh, shop ammo.com for all your ammunition needs. $20 off any order of $200 or more. They have a uh, wide variety of ammunition over there that you can order online. And then also uh, shop Patriot Patch Company. Uh, the awesome patches and other high quality items, t-shirts and everything else. Uh, make sure to check out the Patriot Patch Patch of the Month Club. Um, when you enter the Patch of the Month Club, you get one unique patch every month. And uh, you can't buy that patch on the website or anything like that. And the, uh, you also get an artist proofread edition that comes along with the patch showing how the patch was designed. So be sure to go check that out. Uh, now, normally I would ask Weird Beard, hey, how you doing, Weird? Right now he's getting lime juice and uh, other things. Champagne. Champagne. Oh, French 75? Yeah, you want a French 75? Oh, why not? We'll try it out. So we're going to do several different... Uh, <laughs> I wish we did two episodes a week. Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> we have hard enough time doing one a week, I think. Uh, so we're going to do actually kind of a drink segment throughout the entire show. Um, so Weird's going to have the different drinks, different tastes, so on and so forth. And then we have a few questions here to discuss to answer that people asked us. So uh, we really appreciate all the people who sent in questions. Um, it's this pretty little glass here. Uh, we got two cameras going, so if you see me looking at the other camera, that's, that would be why. And we got ice in a bowl. I got ice in a bowl. Well, there ice we go. <laughs> For those of you, we've got both the spherical variety and the cube variety. Oh, man. I gotta, I gotta flip this little tabby over on the case. This is bugging me. Sorry, sorry, everybody. I'll edit this out. I promise. <laughs> We're doing this live. <laughs> We're doing this live. We're Bill O'Reilly. All right. So French seventy five first. So we don't really have a week in review, so we'll just skip to the drink segment. The week in review. Um, is this dude came over to my house? Yeah, we came down to Weird's place. We're, uh, we're gonna go in and check out Boston tomorrow. That should be a good time. Um, uh, 
did not get a chance to go to the range. However, we will be talking about some firearms. Mm -hmm. um, this is actually the interesting part because everybody hears Weir's drink segments. Mm -hmm. We'll skip right to that. Uh, but normally, you just hear it, and you're actually going to see it this time. So this is... Oh, I forgot one more thing. I forgot one more thing. <laughs> Uh, Normally I mix drinks in my kitchen, so therefore everything's just kind of right there. <laughs> Someone says Ryan is about 40 years younger than I thought he was. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> 40 years younger. <laughs> what am I, 80? <laughs> you, did, you, did you say you just turned 30? Yeah, I'm going to turn 30 on Sunday. And I turned 40 about... Uh, then four. Four months ago. Five Welcome months to ago. Handgun Radio. <laughs> I'm the old one. <laughs> All right, so this one, actually, we're going to give a hat tip for Manuel, who tipped me off on the Drink and Learn podcast, where they have episodes of classic cocktails. And uh, they talked about the French 75, and in New Orleans, when you order a French 75, they say, would you like it with gin or with... <gasps> Cognac. What is this, Cognac? That is Cognac. I remember Cognac from the movie Clue. Do you remember that movie? Um, I, I, kn I know of the movie. I don't know if I ever actually oh watched with it. With Tim Curry? That's a fake uh, uh, Yeah, I think I've only seen, like, I don't know if I've seen it all, all the way he's the, but he's the butler. I'm aware of the movie. Yes. Cognac. Fondé en 1715. It's my imitation of a French. So, this right here is simple syrup. It's simply you take... Equal parts sugar and water, and uh, <laughs> continue for someone who drinks as much as Ryan. He really doesn't seem like he, he knows what he's doing. Yeah, just all like different than others. And I love how they put some words in French but not others. Why wouldn't they write the whole thing in French? It might have to do with the fact that some of it is for the uh, uh, American bottle. Well. I say stay close to your roots, man. Stay true to your roots. So, according to a Drink and Learn, they actually did uh, equal parts, simple, and uh, lemon juice. And again, remember, French 75 is pretty much Tom Collins, but you're using champagne, which I don't have a stopper. I had a stopper, but my wife threw it away, and then she brought home a bottle. Your stopper is saran wrap. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a little... Flat. I'm sorry about that, Ryan. That's fine. I've been experimenting with this. And then we'll do a nice full pour <laughs> of our VS uh, Cognac. I must say, I've got some uh, uh, E&J. I think it's an XO. I can look it up. Uh, it's just behind me. But uh, I've got some uh, uh, E&J uh, uh, brandy, which Cognac is just simply brandy from the Cognac region of France. So normally we have, we are just talking about this, not actually mixing it in front of you. So for people who are listening on the audio podcast, this is not the normal layout of the show, but it's very rare that we get to do a live on location. So, mm -hmm. And then you'll actually get to hear me shake because we're using both simple syrup and citrus juice. Yeah, so the proper shake. Well, I'll do it on the camera so those can see. Keep your hand on the bottom of it so you can feel how cold it's getting and when it gets to that appropriate level so your fingers are stinging, you can strain it out and then we'll strain it into two. I know what's going to be the buffer music, not music, but that. But the, uh, like in uh, Archer where he's uh, singing, um, uh, what is it, uh, Apache by, uh, what is that group called? Oh, uh, the... Um... Ooh, I broke my and uh, da, 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 we're going to garnish with a little da, 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 da. Le lemon twist. I'm going to put that in first before I top with our a little flatter than it should be champagne. Oh, so the champagne goes in last. Yes. Yeah, you don't want to. Yeah, my wife was asking because my wife loves French. She's not a big drinker. But let me tell you. Oh, look at that. Yes. Just right. Just right. And so, we're actually going to... Hi Ian, how's it going? 
I actually don't own a proper bar spoon, but honestly speaking, I haven't really felt the need to because honestly speaking, a butter knife makes an absolutely wonderful bar spoon. Really, I just want to move the ice cubes around. You can also serve these up in a uh, uh, champagne flute. I guess you could do it in a champagne coupe as well, I guess. Oh, we got 16 people watching us right now. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. So there you go. All I'll right. Give the, I'll give you the one that has a little bit more champagne in it and see what you think. I was pleasantly surprised. I didn't... I normally, when I do it with gin, I use uh, uh, elderflower liqueur because I think that uh, elderflower and champagne really go well together and, uh, and elderflower and gin also work. That's delicious. I really like the cognac, though. I, actually... They were the drink and learn ga uh, gals. They say uh, they say they prefer cognac to uh, gin, and I was thinking poppycock. I'm actually I'm not a huge fan of of, uh, of the uh, your standard issue grape brandy, uh, but uh, let me tell you that's pretty good. The aftertaste reminds me of after you take a nice big haul of orange juice. Yeah, yeah, because you got the, the the dryness of it. I mean, I'm using a, a French champagne, so it's fairly dry. You can't really taste any alcohol mm -hmm. in it for being a Drink that's full of it. <laughs> goes, goes, goes down very easy. And it is actually, yeah, it's a, a fairly stiff, I mean, thankfully we're using, it's a little baby, I love baby finding Collins. small, yeah, having small glasses, because that way you can do what we're going to be doing here, which is throwing back a whole bunch of drinks. Yeah, so I got my, my little baby Collins glasses. I've got my little baby uh, brandy snifters. And, uh, if you hold them like Oh, they're awesome. Hold them like that. Awesome. Hold them real fancy. Oh, that blood blister. Did you get that from my pliers? Yeah. He was, he's been, he was restringing my daughter's guitar. Yeah. yeah I don't know if you see that. Yeah, she's, she's a good one. Pinched much. myself good. Yeah. You know, he found it. <laughs> I know, yeah. It was just the luck of the draw. Um, can, you, can you pull up the YouTube video on your phone so you can see the comments? Um, I probably can. I have a hard time seeing them just because we're so far away from the... Thing. Yeah, no, no problem. I can, I can, I can make that happen. So we'll start off with. Uh, we had a bunch of questions that came in. Um, we'll do that little break there. So right, here we are. Look at this. Look at that, man. Damn, we're sexy. All right, let's see. you can just hang on to it. it doesn't matter. You can set it right there. Ooh. What do you want? I think you just some... turn it the other way. Okay. Whatever. Here we go. You, you hold on to it. You're the one that already reads, reads the comments anyway. All right, so... Uh, look at this. I actually oh, poured myself... Thank you, thank you William. I, I'm very glad that I have a voice as soothing as Bob Ross. <laughs> oh, man. All right, so uh, we had a bunch of questions that came in from various people, and uh, we're going to talk about any number of things, um, random Q&A questions. Uh, so the first ones, they came in from uh, Michael. Michael asked, and I think he's actually right now watching us on Facebook Live, so thank you, Michael. Uh, <laughs> Combining Handgun Radio's main topics and the drink segment, Weird said in the Q&A show was clothing optional on episode 243. <laughs> so if he went to the Garden of Eden bar in Key West, <laughs> where clothing is optional... By Florida law, he couldn't be armed, but would he be wearing his Miami Classic holster? <laughs> I know John McClane did the whole, uh, the whole, like, t-shirt, or the whole muscle yeah, shirt, yeah, whatever. Yeah, he, did yeah. the, he did the tank, tank top with the shoulder tank holster. Top with the shoulder. Could, could you do it without the shoulder, without the tank top? I mean, there's no reason why you couldn't. Uh, I would, uh, I, that, that was actually one thing that I always, I did it with, like, in my 20s. And, and, like, late teens would often wear, like, a loud Hawaiian shirt, <laughs> a Panama hat, and, 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 and just the, uh, the, the, the tank top. And interesting enough, all my gay friends said that, that that was a very, very good look, but I could stand to lose the beard. <laughs> so. You, you really could. Yeah, but. Uh, you really could. Though, I don't know how comfortable it would be. To wear just the, 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 the yeah that leather might chafe yeah especially it's 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 the way my holster's set up is it's it's suede on the inside and uh, and uh, and the smooth leathers on the outside. Now um, in yours, like we were talking about a few episodes ago, yours doesn't actually clip to the belt because no. I've run into shoulder holsters that have little tie downs it, it, that clip it can. to the it belt. Can. There's there's there, there's 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 eyes okay. at, the, at, at the at the bottom. But of you it. don't wear a belt. No. So. 
Nope. It does not apply. Nope. No belt. Nope. Yeah. No, no pants either. Let's not get pulled down off YouTube, please. <laughs> um, no, I don't, so. I, don't, I don't wear belts. No, actually, the, the other day, I, I have a, a, a pair of shorts that came with a cloth belt, and I was trying that out, and my daughter was like, Daddy, why are you wearing a belt? <laughs> She's like, this is wrong. Oh, man. So, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's not do that. Probably, probably don't go into that bar. Or you. We're wearing clothing this time. Yeah. Uh, another good one he had was, what are the Massachusetts rules on handguns being legal there? Okay. So, before we go into it, we have done a show on this prior to this. I think mm-hmm. it was like one of the first shows we did together. Long, long time it, ago. It, it might have been right off the bat. I know the first one was on the Massachusetts carry permits, where literally right. it was, fan of the show, love it, I'm from Maine too, Can I, mind having me on as a guest sometime. Yes. And I never left. So we can briefly chat about that. So um, you're you're more into this. Like, for instance, down here, when, when we came down, I can't bring anything with me. I don't have a Massachusetts ownership permit, and I don't have a Massachusetts license to carry. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sure if I wanted to, I could get like some sort of non-resident thing, but I, I don't, I doubt that I would ever be able to get a permit to carry. It is, you can, no, you, you actually could get a permit to carry. So at least the last I heard about it, they're very, very, non-resident permits are very, very rare. And it's not because they're not, uh, overall it's, it's done through the state police directly Mm -hmm. because you don't have, it's. It's done through my local law enforcement, so the town that I'm in right now, the chief of police is the one who signs off on my permit, and that's why I own this house, is actually I picked a town that was not going to be a jerk to me, because some towns, they're jerks to to law-abiding citizens, some towns, they're not. And this town, pretty much, unless it's, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a shall issue town, essentially, it's, unless you're flagged, they're just going to issue the permit, they don't play games. Some places... Are essentially it's shall issue or no issue. Okay. A bunch of other places would just like nope, we're not gonna we'll we'll issue a permit, but it won't be to carry. It'll be a restricted permit. Um, so um, but yeah, the the actual non-resident permit you need to apply in person in Chelsea, which unless it's been gentrified recently is not a place you want to go unarmed. <laughs> <laughs> and you need to you need to apply in person. And it is one hundred dollars, just like the standard permit. My permit is one hundred dollars. My permit's good for five years. The non-resident permit is good for one year, and that's the reason why it doesn't happen. And and they don't. If you go through all of that, they let you carry. You're you're good to go. Um, it's, but, it's only worth it if you come down here often enough. Yeah. To if, justify. Yeah. If you work, if you worked across the lines, or you were doing security stuff, or all that, I'm sure there are plenty of people who have it. Uh, but overall, it is a royal pain in the ass and super expensive. Man. So. For handguns to become legal? Handguns to be legal here, they have to be on the roster. Yes. And so the ro- roster is essentially, there's a series of tests that they need to pass. And part of that is every um, uh, company submits uh, five units per catalog number. So. Per uh, SKU. Yes. So, essentially, so there's, uh, for, you know, those that are browsing, I don't know if they still have them, they used to, there was a Julie Golob edition, uh, Smith & Wesson M&P, that I believe the only difference of it was that it had, instead of a black backstrap, it had a pink backstrap. And with that specific one, Smith & Wesson donated per every sale a certain amount of money, like $25 to the breast cancer right. fund. And uh, I don't remember off the top of my head. But needless to say, it is the exact same MP as every other MP, at least as far as I remember. But that backstrap, which is just a removable part, happened to be pink. And that is an entirely different skew. So they have to send five of those. And they they didn't. You you can't buy those here. At least I've never I've never seen one. You can buy a standard black um, uh, grip frame uh, M&P, and then you could probably contact Smith & Wesson and say, hey, I'd like to give you $25 to breast cancer awareness and pay you for a backstrap and, and they'll send you a pink one. Yeah. Just the same as you can uh, buy a gun. Uh, one of the tests is it needs to have either a manual safety or it needs to have a 10, a 10 pound plus trigger. And so you can buy 
an M and P. I don't know if they put the put the standard uh, trigger on the ones that have the thumb safeties or not. They they could. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how they exactly they handle it here. I haven't really dove too deep into that. But you can buy a M and P, and then as an end user, change out the trigger. You can put an apex trigger into it, and you're not breaking the law. It's just. It's just that is for this is it's it was never a gun control. This is none of this is actually gun control. This is consumer protection. It's all done through the attorney general's office. There's it's not an actual direct law passed by the legislature. Good lord. And so you, there is five units for destructive testing. So that can be very expensive, especially for smaller uh, smaller companies. And then um, uh, it'll uh, and there's like m- melting tests and all sorts of awful stuff. And it needs to have, like, a loaded chamber indicator, uh, again, manual safety or all that. There's a bunch of stuff. Oh, I think there's, uh, R- Ruger told me, they have a, um, I think it's an LC9 or, it was, or no, uh, an LCP that's mass compliant. I forget which one, but it's one of their small pistols. And they actually put a, um, a Hogue overmold on it because there was something about it needs to have a length of pull long enough that a small child can't pull the trigger. Uh, or something like that. And so literally put a Hogue overmold onto it. You can literally just take an X-Acto knife or, or slide that thing off and pull it off, and it is a perfectly normal gun underneath. But it needs to be sold with that overmold on it for it to be mass legal. How might that affect something with the chassis system? Um, where where the chassis system is the serialized, legally, the firearm It goes by the skew. Goes by the skew, so they could make a skew. But even even with the, but could, so the skew. So they literally they literally could make a gun, because technically the frame skew is not a firearm. So they could they okay. Let's take a, a Sig three twenty. Okay. They could technically make a Sig three twenty with no manual safety and a one pound trigger, but the chassis actually encloses the trigger, and makes it impossible to pull. And in theory, that would make it. Mass legal, there that might run afoul because of shenanigans. But in theory, uh, that could work as a way to get around it. And then you could go through and just pop out the pins, switch out the chassis, the uh, the chassis to a standard frame, and away you go. Like I mean, literally, I can. You could take a um, a Massachusetts M and P trigger, and buy online. The standard Smith Weapon factory, every other place in the country trigger, right? And drop it in, and away you go. Up in Maine, we go to the store and we buy whatever we want. Yes, and they don't ask you to see a permit. Yeah, yeah. But so, and then on top of that, after all that's done, and they've met the test, they f- go on the list that actually, if you search for Massachusetts approved handguns, they go on that list. From that list, they actually need to get an approval letter from the Attorney General, which is the super secret list. You actually can't find it. It's The best trick is to just, like, literally, uh, someone was talking about the FNX 45. They were talking about me wanting to get a 460 Rowland gun. Oh, yeah. And uh, the short answer is, number one, I'm limited to 10-round magazines here, so the M&P 45 is really cool. I like the M&Ps. I like them a lot. I think they're good guns. Oh, the man, triggers are off. The triggers are awful, but I, overall, I really like them. I think they're nice guns, um, and I, you know, I just I like them better than Glocks. I'm not saying Glocks are bad, but I like them personally better than Glocks. So yeah, and I got a screeching deal, and so if I'm I'm gonna get it, I'm gonna get a four sixty Roland. I have it downstairs, and I just need to spend the money to get the conversion kit, which is more expensive than what I paid for the gun. Yeah. <laughs> and then I need to get dive into the ammo and figure out how to hand load for it and all that stuff. And uh, Yeah, Ryan, <laughs> Ryan, will, Ryan will comment about the fact that he's seen my reloading bench. And Have you seen mine? There's No, I've never been to your house. So you have to come, but mine's, yeah. mine's getting dust all over the place. Mainly because my reloading area is also my wood shop. So. <laughs> and you've got two small kids. Yeah. Can you bring up the Facebook stream? On that. Um, probably. Um, instead of the YouTube, because no one's commenting on everybody's commenting on Facebook, and I can't read it because I'm getting old. Yeah, Ryan is Ryan is extremely old, so old. <laughs> yeah, very old. All right, so we'll go to the next question here. Uh, interesting law enforcement guns from Maine and Massachusetts. Let's see, uh, Maine. I've seen that my local constabulary. 
and local police department. You can say Kinsteck. Can yeah. That's a good word. It's like a fancy, I thought Massachusetts, some Massachusetts police department was called constabularies. Well, uh, so like, uh, officially. A constable is a sworn law enforcement officer, but they are, they're not working for the department, they're working for the public. So if you wanted to serve somebody with papers, like you were getting divorced and you wanted to serve someone with papers, yeah. you could contact your town constable. Uh, okay. And you would probably have to pay a fee for them to do that, but that's their job is to deal with like civil stuff. It's on the Hangin Radio Facebook page, I'm not the, the group. I'm in the discussion group. That's, yeah. I like it way better. It's not the group. And is just, this just search Hangin Radio at the top of the page. I, I know these things. <laughs> <laughs> um, so in Maine, um, my local police department carries Glock 43s and 40 Smith & Wesson. Um, that was what my dad carried... Um, before he got done. Hey, this 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 town they carried Glock Glock uh, 22s and 23s. Prior to that, they always carried 40. Aside from when they first switched over to uh, Sig Sauer, um, so they look my guns. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So early in the 90s, they switched from Smith and Wesson revolvers, Model 19 357s, over to Sig Sauer 226s and nine millimeter. Oh, look at those comments. Is this it? No. Here, I'll let you figure that out. Uh, so, the, uh, so they carry that, and then uh, the, I believe their shotguns are Benelli M1s, the autoloaders, the pistol grips, and their ARs, I'm not sure what they are. They're in 223. Do you have the Facebook app or no? No. You don't? I, I do. I'll, let me get, I'll get the Facebook app. He needs me to get the Facebook app. All right. Uh, so, and then, uh, let's see, what else have I seen? I've seen Berettas. Didn't your dad carry a, um, a, a USP? HK, USP, before they switched to Glocks. Uh, I've seen Berettas, I've seen, I've seen revolvers still, oh, in some smaller departments. Do I look like that in real life? Yeah, uh, exactly. Am I that, am I that gorgeous? Uh, yes, weird. You needed HK USP in your life. Uh, oh, Holden says I'm not over the hill yet. Um, I've handled HK USPs, and they're, I mean, they're 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 not bad guns. I'm not going to be like Larry Korea with the, I mean, Larry Korea's little essay on H and K and how they treat their customers is totally true and totally awesome. Uh, but uh, but they're not terrible guns. But I I think they're. For, for what they're going for, they're a bit overrated, in my opinion. For the longest time, uh, Michael says, why do they get expensive Benelli shotguns but cheap pistols? The, for the longest time, um, the local... <laughs> thank you, Siddhartha, free bird. Um. <laughs> <laughs> okay, i got to tell a quick story. Okay. A, a close friend of mine, she was um, a bass player in a band. And literally, me and the man who would later become her husband... <laughs> We were going to go see her at a concert and uh, in a dive bar in Jamaica Plain, Boston. Like, like okay. We went over a set of tracks and he, in tongue-in-cheek, said, are we on the wrong side of the tracks now? And I looked around and went, yeah. I wish I'd brought my gun. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have a permit at that time. Well, I had a restricted permit at the time. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, literally, she tapped me and said, look, at some point in time, we have a really sick rendition of Freebird. Um, if you, when, so when you say out, anyone have a request, your job is to yell out, free bird! <laughs> it was, it was awesome. Like, that's, <laughs> that's one of the high points of my life. I mean, yes, I got married, and yes, I have a daughter, and, and all of that, but me being, be, being specifically asked to be the jerk that yells free bird at a concert, on purpose. Um, so, back to the, they had the Benelli's. The reason that they switched, or the, not switched, but the reason that they had those, because for the longest time they did not really have patrol rifles. I remember when I was a young kid, I asked my dad, do you guys have M16s? And uh, he was like, no, actually, because we have two in the safe. But Were they actually M16s? Are they have auto sears? I don't, I don't recall. They looked like A2s. That's all I remember. Yeah. I was a young kid. I didn't really know. Mm -hmm. um, but... They that was the only, and that was the thing back in the day, you know, a lot of smaller departments didn't have patrol rifles. It was the patrol shotgun. That was what you had yeah. in your car. 
you had the patrol shotgun, your pistol, and if you had a SWAT team, that might be where you had rifles or submachine guns mm -hmm. or something like that. My town didn't have a SWAT team ever. We have a we have a small group of officers that are trained for like tactical response situations where they need to be deployed, but not an official SWAT team. I can't remember who it was that wrote the article, but I remember reading somebody talking about how back in the early, early days of three gun, it was always the cops yeah. that just scored it up. Mainly be, mainly because everybody with the pistol and rifle were pretty evenly matched. But the guy that could run the shotgun really, really well, especially given the limited capacity of shotguns. Well, imagine back in the day before you didn't have all those fancy ramps and stuff to go. Oh, yeah. To load the, you know, load them oh, eight, yeah. eight rounds at once. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like stripping off a piece of corn. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so they, I mean, that's really been it. Uh, Main State Police carry the HK-45, I believe. Um I don't think it's a USP. Is it actually? Is it a USP? H H K forty five is the is the updated, updated. I think one. that's it's, what it's they based carry. off of the, the P two thousand. I think it is. I it's, I always find it funny though because if you see the main state police troopers, their holsters are massive. They look like a sneaky Pete that they carry. Oh wow! It's huge. It's very boxy. It's not. Is it like the Safari Land, or I don't know what it is. It is looks it, does it have massive. The big, does a big like top cage? So I'm not even it? talking about that. I'm talking about the lower part where the slide is. Crazy. Like it's very boxy. Maybe they've updated since I last saw them. But I remember one time I saw them. Like, what the hell is he carrying? A Desert Eagle? I can't remember the last time I saw a main state uh, main state trooper outside of his car. Holsters are huge. I've, I've definitely seen them on the highway a lot. Oh yeah. Especially in that Mustang that they've got around Portland. That one's yes. creepy. And now they have motorcycles. Last, uh, before Governor LePage got done, he authorized a motorcycle unit. Uh, so I'll be There's, there's the train going by. Yep. Local train. Local train. Choo choo. Uh, Massachusetts. What do the uh, Mass State Police carry? Do you know? Mass State Police carry uh, 6 hour 226s. In 40 or 9? I, I'm not sure, actually. That that I don't know. I don't know if it's forty or not. Oh no no, state the state police. Never mind. There's actually was a. St I used to walk past the state uh, police barracks, uh, uh, right near Chelsea, uh, uh, on my way to work, and uh, and yeah, they they carried M and P's. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they carried M and P's. The uh, transit police, transit police carry six hours. The two twenty six. Huh. Uh, Boston police carry uh, Glock nineteens and Glock uh, Glock seventeen and nineteen. Um, trying to think, of, I, I don't know if there's any really crazy stuff. Wasn't that one of the main? Did I remember reading somewhere that there's a there was a town in Maine that carried uh, para ordnance uh, P14s? Probably Holton. Could be. Actually, that, that seems to ring a bell, Holton. I, I I remember reading somewhere that somebody had a double stack 1911 and 45. Oh, dude, they're cool. I yeah, mean, they're cool. They're huge. I mean, it's one of those, you, you better have big hands. God forbid you got a, a small guy or a female officer. She's going to struggle, but... Yeah, but why go, I don't know, why go so off-brand? Because 1911. Yeah, it's fine. If you want to carry a 1911, that's fine. But and I don't... assume that they adopted it before para-ordinance really went off the goofy train. It Was it an LDA or was it a single action? I think it was a single action. But I don't it's know. Safe. It's an no, LDA. Might, might, have been, might have been an LDA, actually. That would, okay, that's a bit weird. Right, yeah. But I mean, the, the thing that really interests me, and this is what I would like to see, I would love to see a list of all the approved backup guns that every department allows their officers to carry. That's what I find interesting. Yeah. Because obviously, the, uh, some departments may issue backup guns, may not, but. I would love to see the criteria of what they allow you to carry mm -hmm. as, as an off-duty or a backup firearm. Because that's going to be more up to you and what your yeah. preference is, as long as it falls into a certain specific set of categories. I know in mass, they have a lot of leeway on yep. many, many, many departments. Because I know... I know a lot of guys are, carry LCPs in their vest. Yeah, there's a bunch of cops... That uh, that you'll you, you hear about in the local forums and all that who are 
quietly enriching themselves four guns at a time per year. You're allowed four private sales. And what they do is they buy a gun off of their department letterhead, which exempts them from several of the approved roster stuff that we mentioned before. And they, uh, they then turn around and sell them like stuff like LCPs. Yeah. Uh, those you know those 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 go really really well. They're in high demand and and they sell them for they buy them they buy them at the at, at the street price and sell them at a premium. Johnny Toops, my friend Johnny Toops, hung out with us uh, the other night or with me the other night. Asks, uh, you think the Sig three sixty five would be a popular backup? I would think so. I mean, it's a it's a decent size with a decent capacity. It's 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 really small and easily concealable. It's super duper light. It's got a nice trigger. It's got nice sights, and it holds a lot of rounds. And now mass approved. And now mass approved. Yes, I looked. I, I looked up uh, the, uh, in the, the the discussion group. There was a, a lively discussion about <laughs> yeah. uh, about the, about whether or not I should carry an FNX. <laughs> I, I started. I started mentioning that when I was talking about my M and P. Um, but the uh, someone was asking, why don't you get the FNX forty five? Because it holds fifteen rounds, and it's one of those like, yeah. And if G- Jeremy paused, Terry chimed and says, "I'm carrying one right now." Yes, because Jeremy's gigantic. Like when we were hanging out at the NRA show, he was carrying that, and it was one of those. Yeah, it wasn't printing. Why? Because the man is the size of a refrigerator. <laughs> He could conceal a lot of stuff. Yeah, he could conceal carry a Desert Eagle. He was, he was concealing, conceal carrying a law rocket. Why do you think that Clint Eastwood could conceal the uh, six-inch barrel? Or was it four or six? Easy, because the moment it went into his coat, it went into the armor. That's rocket. true, but still, he's the one person, he's so tall, yeah. that that vertical shoulder holster mm-hmm. is going to conceal the gun. All right, I'm making Ryan happy. Oh, God, what's this one? All right. Oh, did you hear that bottle? Oh, that bottle's nice. What are you What are you grumbling about? What is, what is this? Uh, I'll show it to you after you try it. I think you're going to love this. Give it a good smell. It's so good, I, had to, I, I, I turned around and bought another bottle. I actually literally... I'll give you a hint. I literally... Walked into Portland. Weird. Remember what Jennifer carries? Just from Eric. Dub. Okay. Yeah, but that's because she's married to Evil Robot. Woo! You like it? It's interesting. Let me show you the bottle. Well, first, first, let me show everybody else the bottle. Right there. That is Portland, Maine's finest liquid riot. Beer schnapps. That's not bad. Do you want a little more? Sure, why not? I'll give you a little more. A little more. Look, by the way, look at, the, look at this bottle. They got the, the, the cool stopper cap, like a, like an old caning jar. So, oh yeah, that's nice. Classic stopper. Yep. Like my grandmother. She used to can, uh, uh, she used to make dilly beans. Did you ever have dilly beans growing up? No. So I think it's a fairly main thing. So, uh, listener James, um, never heard from you, James, so welcome to the show. Thank you for commenting on the, uh, the live uh, broadcast. So I'm 5 foot 3 inches, and I can still carry a Glock 34 with an X300U and a red dot. It's not what you carry, it's how. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Appendix the, in the waistband. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Dubs was saying, you're talking about uh, uh, Jennifer, who's, uh, who's the wife of uh, Evil Robot, and she is, I believe, half Filipino, but she is... She is an Asian lady, let's just say, and she fits the Asian characteristics. She is a diminutive. She is very small, and she is not very tall, and she carries an FNX 45 and conceals it, and I've seen her do it, and she's, she also carries like an... She carries some pretty crazy stuff. Part of it is, yeah, her husband's a holster maker, and he makes some really, really good holsters for her, and they conceal very well, and, and she, she, she plans around it, but... It uh, definitely takes some thoughts. Oh, it's getting warm. Okay, I'm like, you're not carrying anything. What are you showing? Well, no, I, the guy. The guy said the clothing was optional. So I mean, um, yeah. That, so, isn't that good though? That's fantastic. Because I, I, like I, like I said in the in the earlier shows, what what happens is they're a brewery that also has a, a, a distilling license, and when they run out of when the beer starts to run out, they save it. So instead of that flat beer that doesn't taste so good, they run it through the still, and so it, it's got it's got that hop, it's got a little hoppy taste. It tastes beer-ish. Beer liquor. Yeah, 
<laughs> Beer so, fin- uh, and, and Finishing or continuing on with what James said, um, AIWB, this is the thing for me. I'm fat. It don't work for me. I, I'm, I'm standing right here beside him. He, he um, is fat. Yeah. So, oh. Yeah, I'm, I'm pushing it as low. Yeah, so you know how everybody else, you know how uh, you have to pull your shirt up to get to your gun? I have to pull my shirt up and then my stomach up to get to my gun. So AIWB doesn't work for me. Uh, I uh, I should make that into a t-shirt. AIWB doesn't work for me. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, I, So that's why I pocket carry. That's why I like uh, belt holsters. And then cross draw works for me as well. Again... Whenever I tell people that I cross draw carry, you have to understand that I've trained with it. I understand the disadvantages to it. I understand that you could be, but it's the same thing with the yeah, shoulder holster. Yeah, I, I cross draw too. It's, it's, it was actually really funny. The the, uh, the Sid Hartha asked in the little that little video that we just put up uh, of this this afternoon. Oh yeah, of, the, of, of this driving the shoulder and, holster. Yeah. yeah, he was asking if I was wearing my shoulder holster. He said he could see it. I, I actually looked at the video. I didn't look too close, but he said I was with him and I didn't know. Yeah, and he literally said, "No, you don't, do you?" And I unbuttoned my shirt, and there it was. Yeah. And he said, "Oh wow, it's further back than I thought. the bu- The butt of the gun was 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 tucked a little further back." Than I was he, thinking it was going to be resting right yeah, here, and it was pres- like way back. Yeah, presented forward. But I said again, I always when I draw, I always. The idea, my two, my two thoughts are, depending on the scenario, if I've got distance, the hand, the, the left hand goes onto my right shoulder, and that s- turns my body, it starts blading me in, and it brings that gun forward, and essentially I put my hand on my sternum and drag it across, and that gets it underneath my cover garment, I find the grip, I hit that thumb brake, it comes out, and then I meet in the middle and present. And, uh, or the idea is if someone is directly on me, I'm going to strike at their face. I'm going to get my hand in their face and that will get my arm out of the way for my draw and, uh, and all that. In which case I'd probably go to a retention and probably fire towards the pelvic girdle because that'll, that'll, that'll change his idea. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, no, nothing says not today than, than a few shots in the pelvis. I got to look at this too because, uh, uh, James is saying that the wedge helps um, when you're a little bit overweight. You got a bit of a belly. The well, uh, the wedge. I know if you saw L- Lucky Gunner had a, had a guy. He let's just say he didn't have your body type. Yeah, he was he was a he was a big dude. He probably weighed as much as you, but a I think he portly. Uh, he probably had about eight inches on you. Let's just say. Yeah, well that that makes a difference. Yeah, but uh, he he ca- he carries uh, appendix inside the waistband, and uh, and he has it d- does definitely does the wedge. Um, I was thinking he said, I think one of the things he said is he, he always makes it a point to carry a longer gun. Yeah. He said it, 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 for a bigger person, a shorter barrel is actually a disadvantage because it's going to exactly do that. It's going to camp the gun. And that's the thing. I, I really, it, I should look into carrying a larger gun, but I don't, I've just been spoiled by the fact that I have a smaller, I can pocket carry. I mean, I wear bigger shorts. I wear pants that have bigger pockets. Mm-hmm. I can carry a J frame. I can carry as large as my my car, mm-hmm. CM nine. I've actually pocket carried an M and P shield one time. Oh yeah, and it was perfectly comfortable. I yeah, I've uh, not that that's ideal. Not you know there are it does have its disadvantages, but no, I mean it's M and P shield is. Pretty darn close. There might be a couple of dimensions right. that are a little bit different than my uh, than my uh, car PM forty five. It's funny though. My car PM forty five is a size bigger than your than, than your than your uh, CM nine. I have a couple pairs of shorts where I took an unloaded Glock nineteen and stuck them. I didn't have a pocket holster, so mm-hmm. I, was, I just was trying it, and I stuck them in my shorts, and it actually was fine in my pocket. Yeah, no, it, I, I, it I might I, not be the most concealed, but. I, I, I dropped my uh, M&P 9 Compact. That's the first gen, so not the Glock 19 size one, the one that's in between the 26 and the 19. I dropped that. I, I, again, it was unloaded. I did not have a, I don't have a pocket holster for it, so that would change things slightly. But, yeah, it fit in, my, in, the, in, the, in the front pocket of my, of my jeans. So, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I like inside the waistband carry. Matthew uh, Shinzig is talking here. Um, you Never know, heard of him. Yeah, three or four o'clock um, uh, inside the waistband carry. That has worked for me. 
I'm a big fan of outside the waistband belt holsters. I have a, uh, a belt slide for my J-frame and for my car, and I run those. I do a lot of driving, so I, um, I'll run those cross-draw. I can access them from the car seat without having to undo my, my seat belt. That's, that's something to be said, too. There's, there's a, another statement of the, oh, oh, what are you doing? So, like, um, I remember actually hearing, uh, it was Marco Close, of the, 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 author, the author, he, he wrote in his blog once pointing out the fact that, I think you said he was, he was uh, ankle carrying for a while. And it's pointing out that yep. if you are somebody who sits at a desk all day. My if, dad ankle carried. If you're, if, you're, if you're a tech and you are at a desk most of the time or you're driving a car most of the time, you're going to be able to get to an ankle holster faster than a 4 o'clock. My dad told me the reason he ankle carried is because when you're a cop sitting in a car, you're sitting there, you're having members of the public, whoever, come up to the window all the time. Whenever you're a police officer, you're interacting with anybody, you never know who's a threat and who isn't mm -hmm. a threat. When you're sitting there, seat belted in, someone comes up to your window to ask for directions, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Potentially, you know, we had that thing happen in New York. Those two cops that were sitting there and they just got gunned down. Yep. They didn't know, you know, maybe the guy came up and started asking for directions and once they were distracted talking to him, yep. he drew a gun and started shooting. Who knows? Yep. But as a police officer, if you're trying to go over here, you may not be able to get to the gun as fast. Maybe your mm -hmm. retention can't be undone or whatever. But with an ankle holster, you're just reaching down here yep. and you're coming up and you can start doing and, business. And, and you're in the seated position, so your ankle is already... Already right most there. Most of the way there. So there's a lot of stuff to say about that. Is the if you're doing a lot of driving, um, I mean, you know, there's a, another statement is like, for a long time I was working in a lab and I was wearing a lab coat, trying to draw. I was in, in a company that uh, that didn't oh, you're getting a call on your phone. <laughs> uh, was that Jeff? Yeah. That was the Jeff. Yeah, he was on the last show. Uh, the. Uh, but I was, I was calling back. <laughs> um, well, you can, that's your phone. You can't send a text message. It says, give it a break, Bob. Oh, my God. But, the, uh, um, but I was in a permissive, permissive company, and, but I was wearing a lab coat most of the time. And let me tell you, shoulder holster is really, really good. Why don't you answer it and say, oh, no, never mind. Yeah. He gave up. Uh, shoulder holster was great for that because it allowed me to carry a full size gun and again I'm drawing through the opening in the top of the lab coat instead of trying to hike up this because a lab coat goes down to your knees in case you spill chemicals down the front of you and so the idea of trying to hike up that much fabric so that you can get to an appendix holster or a belt holster or, or a cross draw or all that way easier just to go for the shoulder holster. So that's that's also something to think about is how how are you going to be most of the time? Again, great statement about a cop sitting in his car just waiting for stuff is the yeah, that's that's gonna be a time and that's I assume he was also carrying a gun on the belt. Yes. So well, uh H K USP. Yeah, so he had the H and K for most of the time, but in that instance when you're in the car, you've got to make that conscious effort that, you know what, I might reach for this. Uh, hi to uh, listener Scott. He's watching right now. Uh, Scott is the guy that came up and met me up in uh, Waterville. Okay. We uh, ended up having lunch at uh, Silver Street Tavern. Awesome. Yeah, he's a good guy. Comes up to Maine, does some work on campers and whatnot. So thank you, Scott, for uh, watching the show. And thank you for working on campers. Campers are cool. Uh, hello from Matt Murfreesboro, Tennessee. we got people watching us from all over the place. Yeah, man. Uh, More popular show. Thanks, for it. Randy, you're the bass player, I think. Uh, we were talking there. Uh, so we got I used to play tuba. That makes me a bass player. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Can you do the sad trombone, like from The Price is Right? Um, I mean, you'd have a trombone. That's, boom, that's boom, you... Wow! Oh. That's called the, that's called the Cassandra. You need to. You yes. definitely need the slide for the Cassandra. <laughs> I used to play trombone too. I was not very good at it. I don't have the agility. Uh, is Weird's liquor cabinet larger than his gun cabinet? No. No. Yeah, you've seen you've you've seen both. Yeah, I don't know. We're looking at the liquor cabinet, and damn, it's it's pretty deep. Do we count the nips? Uh, those are my wife's nips, <laughs> but uh, but sometimes sometimes they. My wife does not drink very much, so this is the, like a lot of these. Those are vintage nips. 
Does alcohol expire? No. No, it does not. No, it does not. If it, if it is in a sealed container... Now, if you had, say, a bottle that had... Uh, I mean, even like this. This little... Oh, you know, here we go. Here's a good example right there. Is my bottle of beer schnapps. Let me turn that so the camera can see. There is... Let's see. There is two fingers of liquor left at the bottom of this 750 milliliter bottle. If that is left alone for too long, moisture is going to get into it, oxygen is going to get into it, it's going to, to, to spoil it. But as, as far as something like a nip bottle, as far as just a full bottle that's sealed up, no, it's pretty much good forever. For sure. Really in, unless unless it's though. something like, again, we got this, uh, this bottle of cognac here. Big problem. That is a nat that's a natural cork. That will go bad on you. And actually, I've got uh, oh, <laughs> show and tell. See, this is what we set up in the dining room. Yes. Show and tell. Look at this. I've got a bottle of Grand Marnier that my wife bought for making uh, crepe Suzette. And uh, again, she doesn't drink very much, so it was one of those. Don't you drink all that? I need that for cooking. And then. She works all the time. She came in at like 9 o'clock tonight. Uh, so literally the cork went bad on it and failed. I had to pour this all out into a measuring cup and then a little nip. Any breakfast meal that needs liquor. I'm going to give you just a little bit. Because yeah, I don't want a lot. It is essentially triple sec made with cognac. It's very sweet. With a glass of water. Yeah, you know, you can just put that away. Yeah, but yeah, the, but this 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 one because it's a it's a cognac based drink. They had to they had to go and put that natural cork on there. And, yeah, Br uh, Brina says I'm sure your wife loved the impression of her. <laughs> she, she gets a lot of it. We we <laughs> known each other. I met my wife when we were thirteen. She knew who she got involved with. <laughs> Oh man, okay, let's see. Uh, how many J frames does Ryan admit to owning? Uh, I only own one, and it's the best one. It's a pretty nice one. It's, Actually, I, I don't know if I've handled you've never, it. Since you've never handled it. It is my uh, Smith & Wesson Model 60 um, from the, God, I don't, I don't know from when. I'm pretty sure it's very, very early. And uh, it was modified by Chris Rhodes, a fantastic gunsmith over at Bayside Custom Gunworks. He's a great guy, uh, does a lot of great work. You should go like the Facebook page and his page to see everything that he does. Um, really, really incredible stuff. We've had him on the show a couple times. We are going to have him on the show soon again to talk about, um, what, what the hell, the Lehigh Defense. He's been doing a lot of work with the Lehigh Defense people. Um, working on their hunting bullets. I believe he's out in Wyoming right now, and um, that's where his shop is now. It used to be in Virginia. Okay. Uh, we were going to go down and see him, but now he's in, he moved over to Wyoming or Idaho. Makes sense, given that he yeah. blasts prey dogs in a thousand yes. yards with he, 44 Magnums. 44 Magnums, uh, six, what is it, 6.5 by 284, you know, specialty pistol cartridges. Um, he makes specialty pistols. He hand makes the stocks for them. Um, does work on the actions, the barrels, everything, builds them for people. Just does an incredible amount of work. Um, he did, he took my Model 60, it was a, a stainless steel Model 60 with wood grips. He took and uh, bobbed the hammer, polished it up, bead blasted the frame, polished the cylinder, did trigger work to it, and put on a set of Hogue grips. Um, I wanted boot grips, and this was for our episode where we were going to do the ultimate concealed carry revolver. So basically I gave him my gun and I said, here, make, let's discuss what the ultimate concealed carry revolver will be, we'll have you make it, and then we'll discuss afterwards, after I have some time to shoot it, how I felt about it, and it's, it's really fantastic. You would, think, you would think that it being an all-steel gun, it's going to be heavy in the pocket or heavy on the belt. That actually is an advantage. Um, it's not that heavy, and compared to something like... How much does it weigh? Did you put it on the scale? I've never put it on the scale, but I mean, 
compared to something like that 340 or whatever that you shot in 357, mm -hmm. I mean, you put the hottest 38 plus P's you can in this gun, and it's still going to be a kitten. Yep, and and on top of that, um, yeah, or think about how much my PM45 weighs all stoked up. I know my, my PM45 all loaded up is 24 ounces, which is both very light and very heavy in the fact that when you realize that it's, you know, six shots of 45 ACP in a, in a gun and it's in my pocket. But it's, it, it's got a bit of weight to it. That's why I like my, uh, my LCR sometimes when I've got a pair of, like, baggy shorts that are not going to hold up well to 24 ounces of 45 ACP. Right. Hey uh, Ian, uh, if you're still here, what was your what was your question? I didn't uh, I didn't get it there. The Ian? Yeah, uh, uh, not not the Ian. Um, Another Ian. Uh, from mainly firearms. Okay. In, uh, where the hell was it? It was outside of Lewiston. Yes, yes. Oh, uh, not Lisbon. Not Lisbon. Uh, I'm sorry. I'll have to look it up. Mm -hmm. All right, what do we got here now? Uh, so I, I poured Brian another drink because I wanted another drink, and, and I wanted to talk about this Yeah, one. Uh, as Siddhartha says, live hangover, hangover show in the morning? Uh, this is all high-quality stuff. We are professional drinkers, Siddhartha. Oh, yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so this okay. is the, uh, the, the Centauri uh, Toki Whiskey. Uh, it's the base-level blended uh, whiskey from uh, Centauri in Japan. Uh, it was something I've, I've always been looking at for a while, and then New Hampshire had it on sale, and it got just below that threshold where I'm like, eh, it's worth a try. And i got to say, it's really, in my opinion, it's just worth a try. I wish, I usually keep a bottle of uh, Spayburn 10-year-old uh, single malt scotch whiskey, and I find the two of them very, very similar, and I would argue the Spayburn is a little bit better, and last I remembered, it's a little bit cheaper. Uh, but and it's also a single malt versus blend, which, yeah, I mean it's one of those. The a blend just means that they're grabbing from multiple distilleries. Uh, Centauri, of course, is uh, the part of the conglomerate of Beam Centauri, so they're like one of the biggest whiskey makers in the world right now. So the first thing that I I said to Weird when I smelled this was it has a really sweet smell to it. Yeah. Yeah. It's Sweeter just, than you would think to a bourbon. Well, it's not a yeah. Well, it's not a bourbon. It's the so. Um, oh, jeez. No, I, I, Is it a rice whiskey? No, it's it's uh, uh, malt. It's uh, malted barley. It's pretty good. So the uh, I forget the name of the gentleman, but this started back in like pre. It's it's a pre-war. This Japanese gentleman went over to Scotland to study how they did whiskey, and so he learned the trade of whiskey from Scotland, and when he returned to Japan he started making, essentially, the Japanese version of Scotch whiskey there. And then, so the story goes, the, uh, the CEO of the distillery that he was working for tried it and said, this is disgusting, you need to fix this. Because, I guess, the Japanese palate was not as good for some of the more robust flavors that are common in Scotch whiskey. And so it was... I guess you could say subdued, which is probably actually the, probably the biggest explanation of why I would argue that the Spayburn 10 is better than this. This, my, this, is, this is good. It is, it's very good whiskey. Let me tell you, it's not, I'm not going to have a hard time getting rid of this bottle. Yeah. But again, it's very much a sco scotch, and again, the, the Spayburn is a uh, Speyside whiskey. There's a lot of whis whiskeys that you can compare to. Like I argued that um, Liquid Riot, they make a single malt whiskey. They can't call it a scotch because it's, uh, it's made in, in Maine. So therefore, it can't, it's not made in Scotland, it's not scotch whiskey. In Maine, we call it a scotch. Scotch, guy. <laughs> so, uh, Give me a scotch in water. Yeah, so they're, so they're malt whiskey, dude. <laughs> their malt whiskey is... Uh, Make I, sure mama don't use a tap water. She got fluoride in it. <laughs> <laughs> Hey man, Sebago Lake Water is some of the greatest. the The only place that has better tap water than the the, the uh, Metro Portland area is uh, is uh, New York City, where they have their their aqueducts that come from down from the Adirondacks. Lawrence says I'm an inch away from buying an LCR. Enable me, weird. Oh, <laughs> how not? Okay, it's lighter than most J frames. It's cheaper 
the most J-frames. And again, the J-frame, super duper simple pocket carry gun. You can carry it in the belt. Everyone makes a holster for it. Um, and it's the stupid simplicity of a revolver. If you're excited about the stupid simplicity of a revolver, then you're probably thinking about getting a small pocket gun as either a backup gun, an ankle gun, um, a, a, a light carry gun. And it's lighter than a J-frame. It's cheaper than a J-frame. And it is in... God, they've put it in every caliber whatsoever. I mean, That's it's... true. You can get it in... I, I personally would recommend the three fifty seven just because... I'd recommend three fifty seven twenty two long rifle. Yes. Those are the two I have. The only way that I would get the twenty two Magnum is if they figured out a way for you to interchange cylinders like they did with the single six. Mm. For you to have a twenty two mag and twenty two long rifle in one gun. That'd be kinda cool. That'd be like that. Just press the button on the cylinder crane there. Yep. Near the cylinder crane like Taurus does with that multi change one. But you'd have to have six shots of twenty two long rifle. Yeah, that's that's the that's the crap part. I will swear. Oh well, but uh, but either way, I, I like the twenty two long rifle one, uh, and I I like twenty two long rifle revolvers. Yeah, it's just so much fun. I uh, and I like the three fifty seven because as much as I love the three twenty seven Magnum, like it is a, a really nice cartridge, and I like the fact that you get that extra shot when you're dealing with something that's five shots. Having that one extra shot really makes a huge difference. But three twenty seven is just like. It's so rare. It has not taken off. Uh, and so... <laughs> All right, the wife's listening, and now she wants one, too. <laughs> Good. <laughs> All right, there we go. Double double score. <laughs> so we got two guns we got to talk about. People are asking about. Okay. Uh, what, the first one was from Ian mm -hmm. um, before he left. Thank you for listening for mainly firearms. Uh, in Minot, Maine, I believe, is where he is. Okay. Um, Actually... He, he, well, I, I, I know where it was because I looked it up on the map, but I, I, I've since forgotten. He is asking about the car P380. Okay. Um, I have a little bit of experience with this. That is the gun. So I was I had the car CM9. So are we we're talking about the there's a couple of 380s. The 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 CM9 380. Okay. The the CM 380. Yep, yep, yep. Whatever it is. I think I, I don't It's a little larger. They make yeah. they make they make a tiny 380 that is goddamn diminutive. I think that's the one he's talking about. Okay. I'm pretty sure. Well, let's, let's talk let's yeah. talk about both of them. We'll talk about that one cuz that's what I have the experience with. Um, when I went down to my first NRA show, I flew down and I didn't want to go through the hassle of bringing a firearm with me on the plane. So, I had a friend of mine, TJ, friend of the show TJ. Never heard of her. Uh, Pixie. Um he was driving up, so he brought along. He he carried his CZ eighty three, CZ eighty three and nine by eighteen, eighty two. So he carried the CZ eighty two and nine by eighteen. Uh, Grant Cunningham, made, uh, we were walking with on um, Broadway with Grant amongst all the country bars, and we were talking, and Grant was like, "Oh my God, oh who, what are you?" He goes, "What do you carry?" Or we we're talking about what we we're carrying or whatever, and TJ goes, "I'm carrying a CZ eighty two. He goes. You're carrying a CZ-82? He goes, yeah, I have it in this holster, and I'm using Buffalo Bore 9x18. And <laughs> I was like, man, that's kind of badass. I, lo I love the CZ-82. That is uh, Buffalo Bore 9x18, too. Yeah. I mean, that's the way to go. 9x18 is, I mean, granted, it's... It's it's not 9mm, it, but... But it's also not 380. Yeah. And, and 380... Is often argued 380. Is it adequate? Is it not adequate? And if you're using Buffalo Bore, those rounds are cooking. Yeah. So again, the night if if 380 is kind of the, the the lower limit of what you would consider a major caliber, uh, nine by eighteen is a little bit better, a little bit stouter. So it's going to definitely tow over that line. And yeah. then Buffalo Bore, you're not quite. In, Quite to nine millimeter territory, but you got to be within striking distance. That, C, that CZ is going to be able to handle it too, because the person you shoot is not going to be able to take the Pepsi challenge. Yeah, those are going to be some bitching loads. And, and you've got thirteen of them before you need to reload. Right. Um, so he brought with him his uh, car P or CM three eighty or what I can't remember what it was called. Anyway, it was their tiny three eighty, the polymer frame, steel slide, black and silver, and I pocket carried that thing the entire show. I can't, that was the gun that was at my bedside at night, and I really liked it. It gave me, it was it was the size of an LCP. I think it's a hair smaller. It might be a hair smaller in terms of the height and the in the length, not the width. 
but it gave me better sights, and I felt like I had more to hang on to, and I mm -hmm. felt like it would have been more comfortable to shoot. Because yeah. of the width, there's more of that force is directed across a wider area mm -hmm. of your hand. With an LCP, I mean, they're not uncomfortable to shoot, but you're definitely getting a little bit of a snap. It, it, it definitely, I've, I've handled both of them, and the LCP definitely feels a little bit more squirrely in my hands. Yeah, they're, they're, it's a good gun. Um, the other one that we were supposed but to... But they also, they also make one that is the, 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 a PM9-sized gun. They do? Yeah. I, for, I forget the number. I need, I need to look it up on that, and you've taken all my devices. Yeah, we have all... He has, he has both my phone and my tablet there. So hashtag all the devices. All devices, so... So I've got all the booze, he's got all the devices. I win. Um, <laughs> but the... Uh, there. But yeah, so I, I I can't look it up, but there is there is something in the in the C series, so in the budget line, that is a I believe a PM nine sized gun in three eighty, of which case I would say it's like every other micro nine millimeter scaled down to three eighty. It's a great idea. Is the if get your hands on one, shoot it, see what the nine millimeter feels like. For some people, like myself, like Ryan, micro nine millimeters, not a big deal. They're they're gonna move around a little bit. They're they're gonna be a little bit of a challenge to shoot, but for the idea of having that much more power and that much, uh, just having a, a better uh, caliber for a small gun, good idea. For some people, it's gonna sting. You're not gonna want to practice with it. It's not gonna be a whole lot of fun. Get that smaller one, and you're gonna have that lighter recoil yeah. spring. So that rack and that slide, oh, it's gonna be just like cake. It's like the 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 Shield EZ. Oh my God, how much love I have for that gun. And again, that gun, not a gun that I have any interest in personally. It's not the gun for me. It's not for me. I would carry a nine millimeter over that because it's the exact same size, and I shoot nine. Millimeter. I mean, I should carry a pocket forty five. That gun barks. That gun moves around. I was shooting it the other day. It's not an ideal gun for a range trip. It's not a range toy. But for pulling something with a bore that you can roll a marble down out of your pocket when you're wearing what I'm wearing right now, shorts and a t-shirt, and it's perfectly concealed. Kimber K6S. How do we feel about that? K6S. The revolver. I, I, I like it. I, I, I haven't shot one, but I, I haven't heard anybody say that there's any problems with it. And let me tell you, a revolver, they either work or they don't. I, I am, I'm a fan of them. Um, we all kind of know the background. We actually have a really good episode. I'll have to bring the show note, uh, the, uh, the number up. I don't remember the number off the top of my head, but we did do an episode with Grant, the guy, Grant Cunningham, friend of the show who's been on multiple times and he was kind of instrumental in helping them kind of figure out that mm -hmm. whole thing he wasn't the designer but he was like the consultant on it and we have a show where he discusses the entire thing about how they went through the whole process of figuring out what was the best characteristics so on and so forth so um be sure to go look at that see, see if you can find it i'll make sure to try to put it in the show notes or put it in the comments section on the live video so people can go back and reference it i think it's a good gun um i think the holster makers have had more time to get stuff out there for it um but would i choose it over one of the new cults i don't know Ooh. Well, especially since we've got the new uh, was it the King Cobra, do they call it? Yeah, the King Cobra. The three I, I, I handled the new King Cobra. I, I did not like the Colt, the Cobra. But then again, think about it this way. Colt started with the thirty eight and then had the King Cobra, which is beefier, with the three fifty seven. Whereas when Kimber came out with the K6S, it was three fifty seven from the get-go. Mm -hmm. I honestly think that I would go with the Kimber. As much as... People, can I can people, I just be honest? People have Kimber horror stories, but I haven't heard a yeah, single horror heard, story about the case. I've, no, I've heard nothing but good reviews from the from the Kimber at this point in time. I uh, have you seen the distance between the recoil shield and the back of the cylinder when that thing's locked up? 
That is damn good machining. Yeah. You know, people people give Kimber a rash of crap about about this, Every, that, everything, the everything I've said what I've handled the trigger has been like butter as you, well. And you look at them though and, and they look like they lock up good. They look like they're tight. They feel tight, but you look at them and they look tight. I mean you look at how the cylinder makes up with that recoil shield in the back. You look how the whatever side plate or whatever, you can't even tell. I mean it's really, really high quality machining. Yep. Very impressive. But in the end I carry an L C R in three fifty seven. I like a little bit smaller gun and a gun that is way lighter and still tames that recoil. I, I can't disagree with you on that because I shot your Colt Trooper with a four inch barrel, all stainless steel gun, mm -hmm. with the full house three fifty seven magnum loads. And it wasn't punishing it doesn't bother no. me to shoot those, but I mean I was like, man, you can tell that's got some juice. But I, I put a few hundred rounds through that gun. There was when I first got it, I brought a pile of my of the, those exact hand loads. Yeah. The exact recipe that uh, that you were shooting. Uh and I was just one of those having it's, fun blasting away with three fifty sevens, and by the end of the day, I was feeling it. It was hurt. It was hurting me. That LCR though, I'll tell because that time we went, you didn't think I'd do it in the video. You were like, "Hey man, load four thirty eights and put one three fifty seven. You didn't think I'd do it. And I you did it, and you spun, and I spun, and you spun the spun cylinder. The cylinder. <laughs> and the video's up on YouTube. Go <laughs> go watch that and see him, and you can see you can see that big flat point. Roll it up into that. Yeah, into that you can actually see like the short bullet, short bullet. Oh, there yeah, it is. Exactly, and you can. And see I had no going, idea. And you can see that. Yes, it kicks a lot harder. Yes, we all immediately knew because that gun made a whole lot more noise, yeah. even with ear protection on. But yeah, you didn't notice it me. wasn't. It, was, it was. It wasn't like he was pointed up at the ceiling when he was w done with it because he <laughs> wasn't expecting. You it. see me go. Oh, there it is. Yep. <laughs> But it's, it really wasn't yeah, that much it, worse. There, it, it is. I I am so in love with the LCR platform. I I think it is some just evil dark magic on the idea of mating that polymer to it and making such a homely gun that is so good to carry. All right, I'm going back to the cabin. All right, we're get, we're gonna do one more drink for this show. Right, but that's that's exactly it, and I'm I I am I'm going big for you, buddy. Oh boy. Oh, look at this. Look this? at oh, this. Oh, bookers. Look at this. This is... Oh. I'm, I'm dumping an outrageous amount of money into Ryan and Chad because I love him. How much dearly. money per ounce? I don't know. This is this is $70 right here oh for the whole bottle. God. I'll give you a nice pour. We'll, we'll even, I'll even keep it out if you want a little more. Money per ounce. Uh, let's see... Uh, Let's look at the comments here. Uh, people oh, talking shoot, I about rinse that I can still smell a little bit of that centauri. Michigan on Saturday, go green. Uh, yeah, I don't know what that means. Go green. Um, I, I think that they mean they they want you to recycle. I love Grant. Need more Grant. We do need we, more. Grant. We love Grant. We are going to have more Grant. I was soon. looking all over for you, Grant, at the NRA show. I was told to the Steyer booth that I had just missed you, and so. He was trying to think about what you were wearing, and I'm like, don't worry, I'm going to look for the hair. Just look for the hair, that's right. And, uh, yeah, look for Benjamin Franklin, and uh, I did not see you, Grant. I was looking all over for you. I'm so bummed I didn't bump into you. We love Grant. It's his brother, Sam Franklin. Sam Franklin. Um, uh, uh, who was it that was asking about the Beretta 84? Uh, Will uh, William. Uh, which one's the Beretta 84? William is a frequent listener. Beretta 84 or 85, he asked. Did you? Did you? Uh, yeah, did you own, do you own one or so on and so on? I know you don't. Okay. However, I have seen some up at my shop, A&G, up in Fairfield Center. That's the blowback 380, right? Double stack? E yes, I believe. I don't think it's... That Jack Nicholson car it ca it's carried in The Departed. Yes, that one. Yeah. Um, I think it's blowback. Is it? It's not Lockridge? I need to look it up. Um, oh, wait, wait, all my devices. Yeah, all our devices. We can't look up. We can't be as accurate as we usually are. Uh, however, uh, the Model 84, um, there was, it was cool, uh, A&G got a batch of guns from Maine Capitol Police that they had in surplus. So they got, uh, I w so the Capitol Police sold off a bunch of guns, old guns they had. It, they're the people who do the security for the Capitol. As in these were like backup guns? No, gu gun guns. Like regular. Their primary care. Hold on, hold okay, on. Okay, okay, okay. 
So the Capitol Police sold off a bunch of guns. They got something like 15 or 16 Ruger PC carbines, the old ones, not the, ta- not the new ones, yep. but the ones that Ruger used to sell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They got a bunch of Beretta handguns. Were those, were those used in 92 magazines? They were using Ruger magazines. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, 92 magazines. Okay. And then the guns, they got a bunch of guns that were carried by detectives, and they were Beretta 84s or 85s in Crazy. 380. Crazy. And they and they had whole grips on them, and they had you could you could tell they had been inventoried because they had inventory numbers on them. I mean, to be fair, it's I forget what the mag capacity is on those, but they're kind of essentially the Italian CZ eighty two. I think these were guns. I, I think these were owned by the Capitol Police for a long time. I'm pretty sure, like maybe in the seventies and eighties. And because I mean, obviously there were better options in the '90s, like Glock 26s and whatnot. Yeah. If you want to give a detective a small gun, you're not going to give him a Beretta 84 and 380 when you can give him a Glock 26. Yep. So that I mean, so I think these are older guns, but it was cool. They were like, yeah, these are you know carried by detectives and whatnot. But they were they felt good in the hand. I I think I think the big problem with a lot of people is those guns are large. And if you're going to carry a gun that large, nowadays, with the technology we have, you can carry a 9mm. You can carry a gun that large, or even smaller, in 9mm. Yep. So. But, again, with that whole combination of 380 and double stack and all that, it might fit your hand really well. And in which case, you might get the point of the, the question is, what do you carry? A 9mm single stack or a 380 double stack? If, if, if they both fit your hand. Brina says Model 85 is a single stack and maybe more comfortable to shoot. Oh. Again, we're sorry. We don't have the... Uh, normally we have the computers in front of us and we can uh, research stuff before we make comments on it. But yep. like I said, this is going to be a very free-form episode. Mm-hmm. Have, you tried your, have you tried your bourbon yet? Oh, not yet. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. He needs to try his bourbon. Uh, okay. All right. This is the um, 2017-03. I don't really know how the dosage. This is the... Um, it's signed. Is this it, is, is the this uh, signed one? From, from the porch batch. No, no, that was my uh, 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 double diamond distillery. Oh, okay. um, barrel-aged uh, uh, rum. All right, so before we get into the next question, we got to try this out. So Booker's... What's the proof on it? Uh, like 120. It's barrel-proof. Really? Yes. I bought I bought my dad a bottle of the uh, the previous generation, which I liked better. Or I think it was two bottlings uh, before this. And he called me up that night and goes, "Yeah, I, I forgot that you told me it was 120 proof." <laughs> he had poured one, and so that tasted pretty good. And poured another one, and then realized that uh, he was pretty screwed up. <laughs> but he was he was good enough. He could dial me still. All right, here we go. 125 proof bookers. Is it 125? Yep. 125.9. Almost 26. Oh. Uh, I'll put hair on your chest. It's a good bourbon. Again, I, I wish I had the, the older bottling, but I, I drank it all. She got a good burn to her. Yeah, I mean, it's warm. I can, t- I can taste that on the tongue. It's warm, but... Uh, I, I do I do like Booker's. I I'll, I'll need to. I'm gonna stay away from this one. This one does not do it for me as much as the uh, the the other one. I, I I wish I could remember the tasting notes off the top of my head. I think that one was a little bit uh, sweeter with like some more cherry notes and things like that. But again, Booker's one of one of the better bourbons out there. Made by uh, Jim Beam. Again, part of Beam Distillery, uh, Beam Centauri. So we're going to get one more question here, and then i got another question on the email I want to get to before we wrap up. No problem, man. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm here all night. Hudson, Hudson H9, how do we feel about that whole situation? And also, um, what do I do with the gun that I have? Have you looked up on that? Have you uh, up on it? Oh, I, I, know, I know all about it. Um, As a matter of fact, yeah, I. Uh, it's a. Uh, it's I don't a, know. If, I don't know if that was on the record or all that, but I talked to a gentleman. Who, it's a cluster clock. Who who was very very glad that he was he was asked if he could make a batch of small parts 
for it. I might I might have mentioned it in the previous show, but either way, if you remember, then that's who. Said Isn't it. It, K and E Arms was doing a bunch of stuff with the uh, leftover parts from them because K and E Arms was a uh, was one of the people who were contracted from Hudson to do work for them, and then they ended up getting stiffed. Yep. Because stuff happened. Yeah, but a bunch of, again, this guy told me, "Oh my God, I just I, I mentioned them just offhand." in a discussion, and he said, yeah, you mentioned them. They contacted us to make parts, and we just said we weren't available at that time, and he says, I'm so glad we did, because yeah, they would have they would have got left holding the bag. Yeah, I mean, honestly, if you have it, I don't know that I would shoot it much, just in case something breaks. If it does break, you're screwed. I really. mean, if you've got a Hudson H9, I would clean it really well, put it in your safe, and then contact Rock Island Ar Auction in a yeah. little bit because it's... 15 years from now. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, unless you're madly in love with it, then shoot the doors off of it. I mean, it's... From all I've heard, they're really good guns, so... I mean, I can't imagine anything breaking on it that you couldn't find. I mean, aren't there... I heard that some parts on the 1911 will interchange. I don't know. Yeah. Uh. I'm not going to speculate on that. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm not going to speculate on that. There that would be that would have been there might there, there might there might be some parts that were based on 1911, might be based on Smith and Wesson 59, right. might be based on this part. I mean, I think the magazines were Smith and Wesson 59. That should have been what they did, though. If I was going to design a gun, I'd want to make it so as many aftermarket small parts could be fit to it. Mm -hmm. to, to allow people to have that. Because, I mean, you know, who knows? If you can order it from Brown Owls or wherever or Newbridge, that makes people happy. Yep. It's not all about being proprietary. It's about making the consumer happy. Yeah. So. Proprietary isn't always the best. Yeah. No, that's why I like You might sell more. Like, for instance, Mossberg is going to sell the shit out of those MS MCS1s. Because they take Block 43 mag. Oh, yeah. That was the smartest decision that Mossberg ever and, made. And that takedown system. Oh, and my God. System. Like, I, it seems like such a bad idea. It looks so dumb when they're doing it. Brilliant. That, the magazine thing, though, that got me. Yep. I said, look at this company. Everybody take a stop, put what you're doing down, and look at this company. They made a gun... They designed it specifically, I mean, they made their own clear magazines, or had a company make them. Mm -hmm. And, however, the specs are the exact same as the Glock 43 mag. Mm -hmm. That's not, that is not, that is the most brilliant marketing Especially thing Especially right a company like Glock, because it'd be one thing to make something that uses, say, a, a Steyr mag. Let's see, yeah. a Steyr mag. Okay, cool. It, it runs off a of Styre mag. Cool, you got it, so it runs off a of Styre mag. So therefore, you can buy mags from that company, whatever company that supplied the magazines. Because I mean, like Smith and Wesson makes. I, I carry a Smith and Wesson nineteen eleven. Smith and Wesson only make nineteen eleven magazines. All the nineteen eleven magazines are contracted out by Smith and Wesson. So you could order from the company that they contracted to, or you could you know, or you could order from the original company, but. Something like Glock, for something like M and P, for wait wait till Magpul starts making Glock forty three magazines for ten bucks a pop. Exactly, exactly. That's that's the whole thing is that when Glock makes a new gun, everyone's gonna be like, well, we better start making the magazine for it because they sell. I mean, God, it was like last year, not not this year at NRA, but last year at NRA they had the one millionth Glock forty three. What does it? What what's car magazine cost? Uh, thirty forty bucks. Okay. What's a Glock magazine cost? Twenty. Maybe. Yeah. If you're looking at if you're looking at Magpul ones, maybe fifteen. Yeah. And that's the tough thing with car, because like car for I mean I carry PM forty five. It's based off a nineteen eleven magazine. I can take my nineteen eleven magazine and put it in my car PM forty five, and it will seat. And it will it will lock into place, and you push the mag release, and it'll drop free. It is absolutely a 1911 mag body, but because it's using that Browning, t it's using the uh, the Glock style tilt barrel. The barrel is tilting up. It's got the little Glock bent, a broke Glock barrel. Is there a name yeah. for that? The, 
It's just that the, the tilt, the, just the tilting barrel. Oh, uh, just the it's just the Browning. Yeah, I mean, or it's the Browning, but a high power, but a link. but a high power doesn't do that. So Sig, Sig, I think Sig was the first company to do it where it locked up on the barrel hood. Okay, but either way, it, it because the feed geometries are different, the feed lips are different, and so therefore. When I, if I load up a 45 uh, 1911 magazine, put it into the gun, and rack the slide, I could rack it all day long. It's not going to pick that round up. Right. Because it's just, it's not presenting it at the proper angle. That's the thing. I mean, if I'm sitting there at the store, and I know anything about the firearms, and I'm like, okay, so I have this car that I'm going to buy in 9mm, and my magazines. That's the thing. Most people, when they're buying a gun, they don't look at the cost of the aftermarket accessories, mm -hmm. the stuff they're going to need. Most people think it comes with this many magazines. And a lot of people, when they buy a handgun, the magazines it come with, comes with, those are the only magazines they're going to own. Mm -hmm. They're not going to buy any more. Yeah. Those are the mags. And I'm, I'm thinking about the fact that I was, I was shooting my uh, Beretta 21A uh, last week, and it had a whole bunch of failures. We shot your twenty five the last time I was down. The yep. mag, and was, that, the mag, mag, was, the mag was bad. Yeah, yeah. and I, I've got another mag somewhere, and I, I don't know where it is. I was looking for it, and I don't know. I need to look harder. Yeah, but it was yeah. But when yeah, magazine failures are a real thing, and so if you've got a serious business gun, I mean that's one of the that's one of the things that's holding back on the PM forty five is I haven't bought. Uh, any additional magazines for it. I've still just got the two two mags that came with the gun. Uh, I, I discovered at... Did I mention this at, at, from the NRA show? I, I talked to Smith & Wesson. That was one of the things I wanted to do. I talked to Smith & Wesson and the M&Ps, 1.0, 2.0, same magazine. They didn't change the magazine. Yeah. So, therefore, uh, if because that was a big thing, I went to Midway USA and looked at it and they had... I can't remember Midway or Brownhouse. I think it was Midway. And they only had... Specifically, they said M and P two point magazines, and I was like, "Is that gonna fit in my gun?" I can't remember. And yes, well, so I need so, to order some. I just haven't. Mossberg, you're kicking ass. We like what you're doing. Keep doing what you're doing. I have a shotgun. Make a full size um, that takes Glock seventeen or nineteen magazines. Make a shockwave that takes the magazines. Make a shockwave in two two three that takes AR mags. Wait. Why not? But is it going to be a smooth bore? Oh, will it be an SBR then? Yeah, it'll be an SBR. Unless they're going to put the straight cut rifling in, then we're then we're dealing with the Reformation. Make a Mossberg Reformation, a Mossberg Repentance. Let's use religious terminology. <laughs> a Mossberg Piety. <laughs> Mossberg Confession. <laughs> I like piety. <laughs> <laughs> the Mossberg Confessional. Mossberg Revenant. <laughs> uh, so, uh, uh, oh, uh, Matt Hoffman, longtime friend of the show, he actually came on. It was funny, Matt Hoffman did a show on Gun Guy Radio the week before I did my appearance on, gu appearance on Gun Guy Radio, and that was what started Handgun Radio. And that was what started me listening to you, which started me being here and started you being in my house. And now here I am sitting at his dining room table. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Drinking my very, very, very expensive bourbon. Matt says, y'all got me to open my bookers tonight. It was a bullet 10 night. I don't know. Bullet 10? Bullet 10. Bullet makes a 10-year reserve? I don't know. I'm only familiar with the... Uh, I've really just got their rye. Their bourbon's their bourbon is very, very good, but it's it doesn't it doesn't cross there's a big trouble when you come to like certain certain things like gins. I love gin, but there's so many gins where I'm like, that's a really good gin. And it's within striking distance of Tanqueray, but I We can Tanqueray. see all of you. You do realize that. I can see the comments. I have to look down every now and then. Thank you, Michael and Matt. What do you say? Oh, uh, uh, Type in all caps. They're, they've been drinking. They can only see them sometimes. <laughs> I, I, see, I see it scrolling, but he's got them on the other side of my dining room table on an iPhone. Yeah. By the way, who has an iPhone? Come on. Android's way better. Yeah, except you have... Look, ten, here's, here's, yeah. here's my Android that he's using. Yeah, except you have twice as many iPhone chargers around here. That's because it's my wife. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the last one here, and this is from uh, our friend uh, Wayman. Wyman. I hope I'm saying your name right. I'm sorry. Uh, he sent Wayland. this in. Wayland Jennings. Wayland. Just a good old boy. 
<laughs> he, uh, he's just and that's, like, the, that's the advantage of having a professional singer as a co-host. Guitar's right there. Uh, he says, I never miss an episode. Keep up the good work. Uh, have you ever tried shooting black powder cartridges in a modern firearm? Uh, until I started shooting cowboy action, I considered black powder as being suitable for muzzle loaders and cap and ball revolvers. I learned that most modern firearms work fine with black powder cartridges. Um, I would not try them in a gas-operated semi-auto or any other firearm that's difficult to clean, but it's particularly well-suited to a single-action revolver. He says, I've even seen a 1911 run black powder ammunition, which was fun to watch. Black powder operates at lower pressure than modern smokeless powder, and the recoil impulse is much more of a push than a kick. Yeah. It's a very satisfying boom with clouds of smoke and a visible flame. Uh, I, I have a friend, and uh, I forget what his screen name was, but... Uh... But yeah, he, he lived in New Jersey, and he loved... He's also a huge Gigi Allen fan. Oh, and I think... I, I want to think he told me he was actually at the station, uh, the, the gas station club, where Gigi Allen did his last performance before he went to the after party and overdosed on heroin. So uh, there's, there, there's a happy story right there. Oh, let's, let's, let's bring the show up. <laughs> but, uh, but he had an obsession... With uh, with running black powder in guns, and he got a 1911 to work pretty well. I mean, I'm sure it eventually funked up because black powder is filthy, and he only used actual black powder. He, you know, the 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 um, you know stuff like Pyrodex. No, that didn't count. That that's that that is not real black. And yeah, he ran a 1911 in that, no problem. I'm sure it eventually gunked up, but it would run in. Like, I mean, it's one of those when I'm carrying my 1911, I'm carrying, you know, eight rounds in the magazine, one in the chamber, and two spares in my uh, in my mag carrier. I guarantee you could probably get through all of that before the before the gun ran dry. The gun would run dry before it, uh, before it gummed up. And, uh, yeah, but he also ran an AR oh my God. with black powder. Yeah, no, the gas port filled up pretty quick, and uh, no bueno. Yeah, it ain't gonna work. No bueno. He says it's way man, too. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't mean not, did not mean to pronounce your name wrong. Waylon Jennings, I understand. <laughs> You're Waylon from now on. Will, will the wolf survive? <laughs> uh, we should do one more from here before we wrap up. Or a little bit more bookers. <laughs> just, a, just a hair, and we're gonna be done. They, they only come in full pores, baby. The credit is a very tiny. Look, look at my hand. This is a tiny glass. Yeah. This is a t- this is this is good for Ryan. Let's. Well, you left a little screen at the bottom. What are you doing? It makes it. Oh, good lord. That's good for you. You think I'm gonna wake up tomorrow? <laughs> I hope you don't. <laughs> God. <laughs> um. All right. Uh, let's see. What are you talking about? It's only a hundred and what? A only a hundred twenty-five point nine proof. It's. It's totally fine. It's, it's it's like milk. It's like it's like uh, it's like lemonade. Isn't so, it delicious though? Nineteen elevens and other calibers. What do you think? I mean, so okay. First up, I'm totally for nineteen eleven in long action calibers because it's a long action pistol. So. When you look at a 9 millimeter, like, when you see a gun on the cover of, you know, American Handgunner or, or, or National Rifleman or all that, and you see a 1911 and you see the spare magazines sitting there, you can immediately tell, is it 1911 or is it, 40, uh, is it uh, 9mm or 45? Because, guess what? The 9 millimeter has got that little rib down the front of the magazine. Mm-hmm. Because, guess what? It's that same long action. Does it make a difference? What's a rib do? The rib just keeps the rounds from going too far forward. So it's the same length front to back? Yes. Okay. So essentially, you could, in theory, I, I don't know exactly. I'm not, let me preface this. I'm not a huge 1911 guy. So he is, and I'm not. So this is education. I didn't fish, School me, sir. I didn't fish out my other 1911 yet. We didn't get a chance to. We'll see it tomorrow. He was like, you got another 1911? Look, that's the first handgun I ever bought. My, <laughs> my, my, my five-inch 1911. Greg Dura Precision, 1911. Oh, oh, it's a nice Smith. It was a 1911. But uh, the uh, and I'm not going to touch it right now because I, I, I might have had a few of these. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Baby glasses. They're, 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 they're small glasses. They, they, they don't count. I round down. <laughs> Children's snifters. <laughs> <laughs> Rounding down, I've drank zero. Um, but uh, 
Um, where was I? Yeah, the uh, in theory, you could technically take a 45 ACP magazine and put it into a 1911, uh, 9mm 1911 magwell. Okay. But, I mean, obviously it wouldn't work because of all the everything. But... So the idea is it's, it's got the same long action uh, to, to handle a 45. So therefore, you know, I'm, I'm partial to 9 millimeters and specifically 45 ACP because I love 45 ACP. Specifically to 10 millimeter because 10 millimeters, oh my God, awesome. And um, you know what, 38 Super, not a bad cartridge. I like 38 Super. But that being said, 9 millimeter. Statistically, not very different from 45. That long action, guess what? Look at your 1911 while you're shooting it. You're not going to see the action running. It's running so fast, your eye is not detecting the slide going all the way back, the slide going all the way forward. You're not telling the difference. The gun doesn't tell the difference. Your hand isn't going to tell the difference. So, you know what? If you want to run a 9mm 1911, run a 9mm 1911. Specifically, I got a friend who carries an STI 9mm double stack. And I think he's got like 75 rounds in the magazine. I, I can't remember how. I think it's like, it's like 20 some round magazines in that gun. And that's like flush fit. Like, well, and, and nowadays, the diff, I mean, back in the day, you know, when you had the, the spear ashtrays and everything else, you had. Oh, thank you, Jeff. Yes, my, Jeff is washing right now. Looking at us. Uh, you were also calling Jeff. Yeah, he wants a shootout. Uh, shout, shootout. Good Lord. He wants a shout out for the Jeff Tones. <laughs> Jeff Tones, greatest band in the world. Here you go, Jeff. That's right. You can, um, you can listen to them on YouTube and on Facebook. And on the Buffer music, actually. That's true. Uh, but I, I don't listen to the Buffer music because <laughs> I was there. Uh, but uh, 45, back in the day, you had the, uh, what did they call the old spear ashtray around? The flying ashtray. Yeah, flying ashtray. Um, that was back when that made a big difference. Um, nowadays, nine millimeter and forty-five. Realistically, I mean, you have bullet weight, but the the construction of the hollow points that are available today are really off. The Pepsi the, challenge: the person getting the shot same by the ballistic movement. performance. Yeah, when you're talking about an actual terminal performance, whether you're shooting a deer or a human being, they're not going to be able to tell the difference. Yeah, if if you shoot somebody with a 45 or a 9 millimeter, and they don't, and, and it's a good hollow point, and they don't go down, it's because you didn't place it right. There was a point in time back in the day where there was a huge difference between a 9 millimeter and a 45. That that disparity has grown less and less and less. To, to statistical insignificance. Yeah. I mean, you've got the, the Illinois police officer. What's uh, Do you remember the guy I'm talking about? Oh God, Matt, Matt did an, an episode yeah. where he interviewed him. Yeah, I, I, I talked about it on the sort of Calibers podcast. The guy who carried a forty five with a bunch of, and now he carries a nine millimeter now with it, like two hundred rounds. Yeah, he, he carries a couple of 30, 33 round sticks. Yeah, because literally this guy whistled when he fell. Like this guy, he put I want to say fifteen rounds of forty five into the guy. It was a ton. This guy was. The, the guy that he was shooting was like 10 feet away from going to his front seat of his car and pulling an SKS out and shooting yep. at this cop. Yeah, essentially essentially the guy had, I think he said he, he had ducked underneath his car. He, he shot And the guy the looked feet. down under his car to find him. Yeah. And he put three rounds into his head, and that's what put him down. Yeah. Guess what? 45 9 millimeter doesn't make a difference. This guy was on something serious. Actually, no, he wasn't. I'm pretty sure they did a toxicology test and didn't have anything in the system. How could they test his blood? I get it was all on the ground. <laughs> I don't know. They were scooping it up off the asphalt. <laughs> DNA test, maybe? Who knows? It doesn't work that way. Well, I don't know. Says that non-biologists... Yeah, you're a biologist. I am, yes. Yeah, is that biologically correct? Um, yeah, look, look at the hollow point. Look at that. Good job, Jake. Jake, <laughs> you do you do good product. I love. He makes sure the 1911 is cocked and locked in his picture. He makes sure the hollow point is expanding as it wrecks the as it wrecks the pumpkin's face. Oh, yeah. that's a great. Matt, Matt says he killed him three times before the central nervous hit stopped him. Yeah, I mean, essentially, it was very similar to the Miami shootout where the guy was dead. He just hadn't given up fighting. Oh, yet. that was worse. I would think. I mean, just what? Can you imagine just one on one this guy? I mean, pumping. 
you shoot somebody that many and, times, and, and they were spear gold dots. The cop, too. T- the cop talks about it in the in the discussion he has. He goes, "I was shooting him, and I was shooting him so many times with no effect that I thought I was missing him." Mm-hmm. Like he thought his sights were off, like they got bumped or something. Handguns are handguns, and rifles are rifles. It is really, let's face it, even a ten millimeter, which is seriously even a rifle though. I mean, unless the rifle was tearing out organs. Mm-hmm. On his backside, this guy was still going. Speaking of tearing out organs, can we talk about Big Poppy? Oh, God, no. I mean, it's just, oh, my God. That poor guy. Like, he's he's lucky to be alive. Yeah. Because he got hit in the liver. And that's that's one of those magic spots where... It's one know, of those worst spots. If you can, if you can hit someone in the liver, it's... I mean, it is, the liver is just a big vascularized organ. It's filled with sinuses, too. What do they say if your blood's black, you got hit in the liver or something like that? What was it? it was in the Jackal there. Uh, Bruce Willis was talking oh, about it. Uh, uh, I don't necessarily trust the biology oh, well, information, but I mean, you don't trust Bruce Willis. I trust Bruce Willis with my life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love you, Bruce Willis. But uh, you were great in Friends. <laughs> <laughs> you were great in Hudson Hawk. <laughs> But uh, no, yeah, he's he's lucky to be alive. I mean, he got, yeah. and that was a, that was a that was a hell of a hit. Yeah, Brandon High Power too. Yeah, all the uh, all the information on that hit. I mean, he's he's up here in Mass General, I guess. Yep. He's doing okay. But, yeah, we're, uh, we're 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 going to go uh, pay our respects uh, t- tomorrow. Yeah, pull him pull him through for him, uh, Big Pappy. That's right. It's 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 a it's an easy walk from the train station. We'll go swing by, say yeah. hi, say say hi to Big Poppy, or as as our uh, senator from or former senator from Massachusetts, uh, John Kerry says, Manny Ortez. Manny Ortez. But uh, yeah, no, he's uh, yeah, that was nuts. I saw the video. That's crazy. I am very curious. I have not heard yet on uh, what on earth he might have been involved with to get hitmen interested yeah, in yeah, and the motivation in, in capping him because. Uh, it was not a ton of money. I think it was four grand to uh, to ice Big Poppy, which, I mean, it's not jump change, but at the same time, to kill another human being. In another being. country, it might be. Yeah, it might be the Dominican Republic, and that might uh, do well, because it was definitely in Dominican Republic, Republic dollars. Yeah. They, they, I mean, they, the, the papers converted the numbers. You look up here, and you think eight grand. It's like, hey, that's, you know, that's nothing. Mm-hmm. I'm curious about the high power too. I, I, you, you think it's a Browning? That's a, yeah, that's definitely a. It's it's definitely a high power. It's not an arc. Definitely, definitely, definitely a high power. It's De- duotone. It's, it's a silver silver frame, blued slide with pa- what looks to be Packmeyer grips. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Man, you know what, high power geeks, chime in in the in the in the handgun radio discussion. Yeah, I'll see if I can post a picture in the group. You'll find it. Look, look up, look up. Gun used to shoot uh, Manny Ortez, <laughs> David Ortiz. All right. So uh, with that, we'll head into the wrap up section, and we're going to close out the show. Shop Amazon using our affiliate links at firearmsradio.tv/amazon. Don't forget to shop. Uh, visit all the other shows on the Firearms Radio Network, uh, firearmsradio.tv. ShopAmmo.com for all your ammunition needs. $20 off any order over $200 or more. Ammo.com slash handgun radio. If you're not spending $200, you're a piker. <laughs> Weird's all about the ammo. I love buying ammo. Uh, I used to like reloading ammo. <laughs> uh, check out the YouTube channel. See all the stuff on the Firearms Radio Network YouTube channel as well as on the Ryan Machad YouTube channel for handgun radio. And uh, Patriot Patch Company. They make awesome patches and other high-quality items, T-shirts, patches, cleaning mats, and more. Uh, PatriotPatch.co. Really, really great people over there. Uh, Really appreciate them sponsoring the show and uh, everything that we get every month from them. Um, We are going to do (laughs) GoFundMe to bring back the high power. (laughs) Uh, We'll do another Q&A show soon, very soon, actually. So many questions in the comments. I'll as, actually, in, as in this Sunday? <laughs> yeah. Well, not this Sunday, but next Sunday. But what I'll do... Oh, yeah. For, I forgot about that. The, uh, it's Ryan's birthday. Yeah, yeah. I'll and, be, I'll and, be, and, and he says he's going to get white girl wasted. I'm gonna be More old. white girl wasted than he is on, on, on Weird Beard's Bookers. I'm fine. I'm going to be old. Um, yeah, but, but look, uh, mine's, mine's mostly finished. Granted, I did give you a heavier beard. All right, well, to wrap the show, here you go. Cheers. Come by. Ah, three minutes.
three more hairs on my chest. So, uh, <laughs> three, three, three more of mine just turned gray. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we're going to be doing a show next weekend, not this Sunday. Uh, this show will be posted uh, this Sunday. That one will also be clothing optional. Yes. And uh, Michael, and we, we might both that. like to wear clothes. But we will do another uh, live Q&A show soon. This was fun. We really appreciate everybody who was commenting. I love the Q&A shows. Yeah, this was great. So uh, be sure to check that out. And uh, where, where can people find you? Um, you can find me in my, 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 my dining room. It's, it's right here. And, and I'm, I'm going to sit here. And I might even pour myself another drink. And so I might, I might be here for a little bit longer. And then after that, you can go to weirdworld.com. And also... Let me tell you, I got a podcast. It's like this one, but way better. It's called the Sorted Calibers Podcast because it's not edited by Jamoke. Like, um. <laughs> hey, I edit things. I put cool bluegrass music. <clears throat> you run a great show, Ryan. I'm a fan. If your daughter wasn't asleep, I'd grab that guitar and I'd play you a song. You should play a song. She, she won't wake up. Play a song, Ryan. Oh, God. On my daughter's a guitar. Found keep it. Talking. I found this guitar on the street. No, keep talking about your show. Oh, Assorted Calibers podcast. It's a really good podcast. It's me and Erin Paulette. Erin Paulette, she is the uh, founder of Operation Blazing Sword and uh, the Pink Pistols. It was a way bigger deal than me. Uh, and uh, there's my there's my daughter's guitar. I don't know how to play the guitar. Okay, we'll finish up what you're gonna say. Um, I. I, I like handguns. I like 1911s. I think Ryan Machad's okay. His wife's good people. I don't, I don't know why she hangs out with him. Well, as always, everybody, thank you for listening to Handgun Radio. And until next week, have fun and safe shooting. Girl, man, always somebody else dares to call my pain. Here I stand where the old home stood Before they could get away How's that? What was that song? Uh, old Home Place. Okay. I, don't think I, 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 I can't do the, I can do the fancy stuff. Can you play some Warren Zevon? Can you play some Tom Waits? What do you know for Tom Waits? Warren Zevon, uh... What do you know for Tom Waits? I don't know what Tom Waits. Oh, uh, look at me. No, dude, you need to listen to Closing Time. Closing Time is right in, it's also in your timbre voice, too. Yeah, I can do that song. <laughs> are, we still, are we still live? Yeah, of course. This is a mistake. <laughs> no, it's fine. <laughs> I can edit it out and post. It's seriously, it's okay. Oh, what, what, what did the right. say? <laughs> Good show. It's still going, guys. <laughs> I guess it's not ending. It All right, everybody. End. Have it, a good night. It's going to end on me sleeping on my dining room table. And thank you for watching. Good night, Internet. Tom Wade sucks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bitch. That's from Jeff. Jeff thinks Tom Wade sucks. <laughs> See, I like the guy.